So in this episode, we're gonna be looking at the qualifier in Resolve. I'm gonna show you how I get really good quality keys to keep my image looking the best it possibly can. There is a little bit in here for beginners and there's a little bit on color management as well. So have a look at the timestamps if you want to fast forward any of those bits. So let's go and take a look. So to access the qualifier, you need to click on this icon here. And there we go. So just quickly to explain for absolute beginners, the qualifier tool allows us to isolate a part of the image so that we can change just that part. So let me show you very quickly. If I just, I'm gonna show you these tools in detail. So, but just quickly, I'm gonna grab this selection tool. I'm gonna to grab her mouth there. And if I put this tool on here, we can see what we've just selected. And you see, we've just selected her mouth. So now any adjustment I make here affects just that part of the image. Let me take the highlight off and show you. If I go to my hue tool, you can see it changing there. All right, so that's just a very quick explanation of what the qualifier is. So it's quite common to key skin tones to get them looking perfect. It's common to isolate things like products. If you're doing a commercial, you want to isolate the product to make it really stand out. These are good uses of the qualifier. So this is the grade so far. Let me just bypass that. That's our flat Sony S-Log footage. Bring it back on. And as I usually do, I've got a bit of exposure work going on here and maybe a little bit of saturation and temperature control. In here, I've got a bit more of the look going on. Let's just see what's going on there. And this node is empty. This node here is my, would normally be my color space transform. In this instance, it's actually a LUT that came from set. And so I just applied the LUT because it came up good. And I then got a spare node after that. And the vignette on the end is actually an inverse vignette because it's actually brightening the edges, not darkening the edges like a traditional vignette would. So that's what's going on here. If you don't understand this and you are an absolute complete beginner, what you could do very easily is, let me just reset that, is just start with one node and literally just grade. So we could go in here. Let's just bring up our scopes really quick and maybe add a bit of gain a little bit of lift down let's bring some gamma in i'm just literally pushing and pulling the image because it's because it's obviously log so it's very flat add a bit of saturation and you're good to go so there's a sort of starting point you would then add another serial to get to the next point where we're going to do the qualification all right so i'm going to bring up my original node so let's have a look at getting a good quality key on the skin here. Now, personally, I like to get my skin in good place without using a qualifier. I prefer to do my work on the skin here. So in these first two nodes and make sure that our skin tone is looking good. And to do that, we obviously check that on our vector scope and we bring up this skin line, which you can do by selecting here and say show skin tone indicator. All right, and that is a very good guide as to where skin tone should be sitting. So I hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, think about subscribing, hit the thumbs up for me, drop me a comment, and let's have a look at the rest. So let's take a look at getting the very best key we possibly can here. First thing I need to do is decide where in my node tree I'm going to actually put the qualification. The main node that's affecting everything is this node seven here. This is my LUT, or in your case, it could be color space transform. So I'm just gonna disable that single node and show you that is what is happening to the image before it hits this LUT. So anything up to node seven, all these nodes here are in log color space. All right, and at this point here, they are being transformed into REC 709. So that's why you get this image looking like this. Anything after that would be in 709. So in order for me to get a good quality key off this image, I need to be working after the 709. Otherwise, I'm working in this very flat color space and it's a little bit harder to pull keys. Now, often I can actually get a really good key in log color space, but in this example, I'm gonna switch that LUT back on so that I'm not trying to get my key from the flat S log image. So let's have a look in detail at the tools available. So when you go into the qualifier, you have four different types of qualification. Okay, you've got HSL, which is what we're gonna to do today. So that is hue, saturation, and luminance, HSL. So hue is the actual color itself, the color range. Saturation is the intensity, if you like, the amount of saturation of that color. And luminance is the brightness of that range that you've selected. So with a combination of all these tools available here, we can get our perfect key. Now you also have these tools here that allow you to select using the actual image itself. And down here, you've got a small section, it's got two pages on it, that will allow you to actually finesse the mat that you've created. And the mat is the result of your selection. So this is what isolates the image, allowing us to just control the skin. So how do we actually get this perfect key that we're after? So I'm gonna use my selection tool here, 
and I'm just gonna sample the image on the skin tone there. And the parameters here have now updated. And in order to see what has been selected, I'm gonna press my highlight tool up here. So it's Shift H, and there we can see what's been grabbed so far. And we've got a really good key straight away. So what I'm gonna do is use, I can either use my plus or minus tool to add extra range, or more subtle is these two tools here. These are feathering. So if I add here, it's just gonna soft, there we go. So it's just added the extra bits in it and it's added softness here. You can see that on this outline here, this triangle is the amount of softness that you've got. So we've got a really good key going on there, but it's not quite right yet. And we could keep using these tools to plus and minus ranges. So let's just click in here and we could say, okay, we don't want that bit there. But I prefer to adjust the actual HSL values themselves as opposed to using these tools. So let's just go ahead and reset this. So I'm gonna use my selection tool to make my initial selection, but then I'm not gonna use any of these tools. I'm gonna to come straight over here. So I start off with hue and let's have a look at our width. Let's expand this out a little bit. Okay, that's looking good there. I'm just gonna adjust the center point just to check that we're at the best point we are, which is good. And now what I'm gonna do is go to my saturation. Now this is really where it starts happening. By adjusting saturation low and saturation low soft, I should be able to get rid of quite a bit of this. So let's have a look. And there you go, that's just really falling into place. I'm not gonna go too far because it's just breaking near her eye. So we'll bring that down to about there. Let's just add some low soft and just check. So that is really good there. And I'm just gonna check my luminance values. I'm just gonna move this actual graph over. And look, if I put that there, we are really close now. I've got rid of most of the hair selection and we've got her lips isolated and her eyes isolated, the eyebrows, this is, this is a really good key now. Okay, so just to fine tune this, I'm gonna to go to my matte finesse tools. I'm gonna to add a little bit of denoise, but not too much. But what's really gonna help getting rid of this and this here is the clean black and clean white. So clean black is adjusting anything that's not our selection and clean white is cleaning up our selection. So let's just have a look what happens in clean black and sort of focus on here. I should clean that up. Yeah, there you go. So that's gone completely. So we've got a really great key now on there. Uh, clean white, I probably don't even need to adjust. Uh, I normally put a little bit of blur radius on as well. This just blurs the edges. This is particularly useful if you're working with 8-bit footage where your keys can be a little bit noisy. And just to show you what's going on here on menu two, this is to shrink and grow your mat. So we can shrink it and select grow. And you can adjust those parameters, but I'm gonna leave that where it was. And I think you'll agree we've got a really good key there. Now, because we've got the highlight tool on, we can see where the skin tone is sitting exactly on our vector scope. So there's the skin tone line, and we're sitting just a little bit below it. So what I could do is use any of my primary tools here. So I could maybe use gamma and push that over a little bit, just like that. And there we go, we're bang on the line now. Let's take the highlight tool off. And there we go, we've got a really good skin tone, really nice key. I might even just put a little bit more saturation in there. And there we go, so that's how to get a really good key. So I hope that's given you some good information and help you get better keys. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.